All right. I think uh, you're good. Very good. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to our order of worship on this Sunday morning, April 11th, Calvary United Methodist Church in Villa Park. And our pastor is the Reverend James Fu. And we're glad to have everybody with us this morning. We come together as a Christ body. Are there any announcements this morning? Carol and I have one. Thank you, Linda. Uh, this is uh, coming from the United Methodist Women. As you know, we have not been able to meet for a long time now for card ministry, nor have people in attendance to, you know, uh, look at the cards and donate money there. So we were made aware uh, through Karen Brennan that Kids Above All, which is the group that the card ministry money is donated to, um, is doing a special drive. Uh, as you know, in May is uh, Mother's Day. They, they have a drive to recognize um, mothers and children in need, and it's called the Mother and Me Drive. And um, Marilyn and I spoke, and Dorothy weighed in, and we would like Calvary to participate in that, anyone who's able. And what it means is they are asking for um, donations of diapers and baby wipes. And um, so we sort of came up with a plan. If people would like to donate to that cause with the products um, on Tuesday, starting on April 20th, the Tuesday from nine till noon, um, Phyllis will be in the office working. You can ring the doorbell at the south door there and uh, she will uh, either take the products from you that you're donating or um, we're gonna store them upstairs. So you come on Tuesday the 20th or Tuesday the 27th, if you'd like in the morning between nine and noon, I'm there on the 27th. And then uh, the third option is on Saturday, May 1st from nine till 11 in the morning. If you wanna come by, um, Marilyn and I will be at the parking lot door and uh, we'll gladly accept any donations that you wanna contribute at that time. If the product is difficult to contribute and you would want somebody to go shopping for those products, um, I would be happy to do that for you and you can drop off any monetary donations, just address it to United Methodist Women and um, or kids above all, whichever way you want that to go. If you wanna make a direct donation to the kids above all, you can write a check directly to them. Otherwise, Dorothy will write one check from the um, United Methodist Women at Calvary. And uh, we know that you guys were greatly supportive at Christmas time with the substitute for hat and mittens tree. And we hope that um, you will be interested in donating here for families that are in need that have little babies, it's um, diapers are extremely expensive. If you've not looked at Pampers and Huggies and all of those brands in a while, they want any sizes, it doesn't matter, they need them all. And their idea is that, um, you know, they want to help, uh, their statement was that, uh, we ask that you help us collect and donate diapers of all sizes and wipes so that our parents, caregivers, babies and toddlers have the essentials they need for a happy and healthy start to their lives together. And, you know, throughout the pandemic, it's been even tougher on these families, especially the young families. So if you can help in any way, United Methodist Women would appreciate that and will be the vehicle to get your donations to kids above all. It's based up in Des Plaines. So thank you very much. Thank you, good job. As we know, that used to be called, the organization used to be called Child Serve. Correct. We've helped them out for a number of years. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, seeing no hands waving or <laughs> urgency, we will continue with our worship, uh, beginning with the call to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. And kindle in, kindle them, in, and kindle in them the fire, the fire of your home. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. And you will, you will renew the face, face of the spirit. At this time, we'll have the hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, from the United Methodist Hymnal, page 280. 
this morning to have our affirmation of faith as part of our worship service and I'll read it to you and I'll follow along on your screen if you're able to do that. We belong to God, eternal and infinite, creator of all things and all that is to come. We follow Christ who comes to us from God and reveals God to us. He heals people and transforms lives and calls us to join in his ministry. He was crucified, died, and was raised by God and reigns over all creation. And he bids us to die and rise with him in the service of healing of the world. We live by the spirit together with the communion of the saints as members of the body of Christ God's holy universal church. 
We are confident in the forgiveness of sin, the power of resurrection, and the reality of eternal life. In all things, it is our desire to follow Christ by the grace of the Holy Spirit for God's glory. Amen. Amen. We continue with our service and by reading the scripture lesson taken from the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, and chapter 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. All right, let me just put all of your faces on my screen so I can see all of you while I'm preaching. <laughs> <clears throat> so nobody, oops, so nobody, nobody nod off, or I'll see it this time. <laughs> Actually, it's okay. It's okay. It's hard to stare at a screen. So good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our worship service on on April uh, April eleventh. I guess it is our second Sunday after Easter. Um, so I want to start off this morning. You can tell that I am at uh, Christ UMC this morning, um, and I wanted to just point out to you the. Um, the altar cloth, and I don't know if the camera is good enough or your device is big enough, but I was curious if you could um, see this word. Um, the word on the altar cloth this morning is rejoice. It is our, um, on our white altar cloth here. Um, and it is, um, it, the white altar cloth is for the Christian season of Easter. And indeed, rejoicing is such a huge part of Easter. Right? We're only a week, um, a week away from Easter, and we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in that resurrection is the reason for our rejoicing insofar as that right, the resurrection of Jesus confirms or affirms for us everything that Jesus said. It, con it confirms for us who Jesus is. Right, who he said he was. It confirms for us the teachings of Jesus, how Jesus taught about our relationship with God the Father, taught about how we are to treat other people, um, taught us the truth of the word. In that resurrection, um, then we also see confirmation that death was never to be part of God's creation. 
that death entered creation in Genesis because we separated ourselves from God through our self-centeredness. And so death, as a penalty, entered into creation. But in Jesus' resurrection, we see this coming of this new kingdom, this new heaven and this new earth, where death is not a part of it. And Jesus being the firstborn of this new kingdom, um, we remember the words that Paul told, told us on Easter, that if we are baptized in Jesus' death, we will certainly be resurrected with him in the resurrection in his life. And so these are all reasons that we talk about this being a joyful season, about Easter, about rejoicing at Easter, right? Death has been overcome. Um, it has no hold over us. All those things that we talk about for Easter. My question this morning is, do you rejoice? Do you rejoice at the resurrection message? Do you rejoice at that knowledge of Jesus resurrected and, and bringing eternal life to all those who believe in faith in Jesus and in God? Um, I don't think I'll get in trouble for this. But I will tell you honestly that that, that that doesn't provide me what I would call rejoicing. I will tell you in truth that provides me comfort. I would use the word comfort, but I wouldn't use the word rejoicing. It comforts me to know that this earthly life is not my end. It comforts me to know that I will be, after, earth, after this earthly life is over, it comforts me to know that I will be fully sanctified by God, fully perfected according to God's plan for us, that I will be fully remade in, that, in the way that God intended me. It comforts me to know that I will be in God's presence in full communion with God and the Trinity, um, it fully comfort, it comforts me to know that I would be reunited with the other faithful. But it doesn't, I, I will say that, that the emotion I experience at that information isn't rejoicing. And I don't know if that's what you would call it or that's how you feel it, but the word is comfort. Now, I do believe that when nearer, nearer to the end of my life here on earth, I do believe that that knowledge will lead to rejoicing. Um, I do believe that when I am looking at the end of my days, that knowing that I am going uh, to heaven to be with God will, will give me reason to rejoice. So the reason that that doesn't give me um, reason to rejoice right now, though, is, and I don't know about, again, I don't know about you, but the reason it doesn't give me re reason to rejoice is because, frankly, I don't think about my death every day. I don't wake up in the morning thinking about eternal life, and I don't wake up every morning thinking about how thankful I am for the resurrection. I am thankful for the resurrection, don't get me wrong, but it isn't the thing that I think about every morning when I wake up. And I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I would dare say that most of you probably do not think about that when you wake up in the morning. What I do think about when I wake up in the morning is, I think about what, need, what, what, what needs to be done that morning. What am I going to do? What, um, how am I going to spend my time, my day? Um, am I going to work? Am I going to work out? Am I going to spend time with my family? Um, how will I spend those 16 hours that I'm going to be awake? And truthfully, what I want to know is that I'm going to spend that day well. Okay. Um, and that can mean a lot of things, right? That can mean that I am going to take care of the house that God has made me steward over. I'm going to fix the garage door or clean it up or something like that. Or I'm going to spend time with my family who, who God blessed me with. Um, or I'm going to do my pastor thing and, and take care of the congregation or work on my sermon or whatever. But the truth of the matter is, is that I am probably on a day-to-day -day basis more interested or more concerned with how am I going to spend the time that God has given me? How, um, and how am I going to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? Right? 
carry out that commandment to stay in love with God and to love neighbor. Those are the kind of things that I think about on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't think about, again, I don't think about my death that often. And so I think it is, um, we, can, we can have this shortcoming when we think about Easter and the Easter season, because we do make a big, big, big deal over the resurrection and the living Christ. And that's good, but I think it also shortchanges the fact that God makes a difference in the here and now, too. That it cannot just be that this life is something to be endured or suffered through, or you just have to make it to the finish line. And then once you get to that finish line, then that's where God is. That's where you receive your final reward. That's where you're resurrected and you have this eternal life with God. I think that that short changes the fact that we all have the Holy Spirit indwelling in us now. This morning's scripture reading that uh, Marilyn read for us is again from the first, the, the first letter of John. And it's a little bit different. I mean, if you heard, as Marilyn was reading it, you heard the, ten, the tenor of the letter. It's not quite the same kind of letter that we were used to from Paul, right? Paul writes letters to churches. Paul is uh, many times troubleshooting stuff, right? He's either troubleshooting stuff, um, things are going off the rails, and they've written him a letter, and he's like, okay, here are the things that you're doing that aren't quite right. Um, or he's writing a letter to espouse doctrine. You know, what is the correct beliefs that we have because you're falling too much into Roman God thinking or too much into Jewish thinking and, and you haven't really claimed the Christian faith, right? But this letter is different. John is different. No, no, it, it's different, first off, because it starts off with the word we, right? It, there seems to be a collective set of people writing this letter to people. And so what scholarship tells us, what scholarship believes about 1 John is that it is a letter from a group of teachers, people that are teaching the faith, and that letter is going to people that are their students or are disciples of theirs. And these teachers, in fact, are disciples of the Apostle John. And that's why this letter gets its title from 1 John. Okay. But the tenor, the tone of the letter is different. And what specifically, if you have your Bible or you have the scripture in front of you from, from the order of worship, the letter, these teachers want to make sure that they tell their students this, that they are testifying to the truth. They are witnessing to the truth. And it's very interesting in this letter because what they say is that we are testifying and witnessing to what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have felt, what we have experienced from God. The best guess in this letter is that this letter comes from around 100 AD, which would put it about 60 to 70 years after the crucifixion. So it is, in some sense, somewhat unlikely that these teachers are talking about witnessing and attesting to the actual resurrection, okay? Rather, they are probably testifying to what they have seen and heard as disciples of Jesus Christ, as followers of Jesus Christ after that time. So what do they, what are they testifying to? The fact that we are all baptized, all faithful in our following of Jesus Christ means that we have received this gift of the Holy Spirit. We have been given a different set of eyes. We have eyes that are informed by God. We have ears that have been trained by God. We have emotions and feelings and souls that have all been um, incorporated into the body of Christ. And so this, what these teachers say is one of their joys is that in sharing this witness, in testifying to this witness, okay, and what they've seen and heard, is that their joy is that they are welcoming their students into this fellowship. 
into this body of Christ. And it reminds me of this congregation, right? When I hear your stories about this congregation, many of you have been members of this, this congregation since childhood. Some of you have joined later, whether you've moved in this area or whatever, but all of you at some point have entered up into membership into this body of Christ, into this congregation in Villa Park. And what that means is that you have all, we have all journeyed together. We've journeyed together in the joys, the joys of going to Sunday school together or joining United Methodist Youth, the fellowship UMF, UMF, well, whatever it is. Um, we have journeyed together in the joys and in graduations, in our children being born or our grandchildren being born. And we've also journeyed in the struggles of life. Struggles of life where we've lost loved ones or we've struggled with the loss of a job um, or through divorce or the loss of parents or children or, you know, or unfortunately maybe children or grandchildren. But this community has journeyed together in that life. But one of the most important things I think that comes from this faith is that we journey together as we grow in our faith too. We come together, and this I think is one of the things that the teachers are talking about here in 1 John, is we journey together as we become more and more made in the image of the likeness of Christ. We journey together, learning together, and growing together in our faith. And as we live together and grow together and love is sort of manifest in us, that becomes our witness. That becomes what we see. That becomes what we feel and what we touch and what we start to testify to. So when I get up every day and when you get up every day, there is another opportunity there to be Christ-like. There's another opportunity to recognize that we are stewards over all the material possessions that we have been given. There's another opportunity to recognize that even time, how we spend our day, is we are made stewards over that time and we can use that in service to God. How we treat other people, how we hear the cry of the needy, right? How we hear the, the needs of the naked, how we hear the prisoner, how we hear all those things are all opportunities we go through each day. And informed by the Holy Spirit, we get to see those things and we have the opportunities to act on God's mission, to be Christ's hands and feet in that time. The question is how we respond to that. To me, to me, that is an interesting thing about being able to rejoice in my day-to-day -day existence, right? Whereas resurrection and eternal life is something that is a little bit off in the distance, right? Being part of this community and learning, learning what the teachers and John are talking about, learning that as we journey in a community, that we are journeying as forgiven people, that that is what this death and resurrection of Jesus did is that it paid the penalty for death and now we are forgiven. It means that we're forgiven when we don't always do it quite right. Sometimes we're too tired to do the right thing, right? Sometimes we don't, I mean, let's be frank, sometimes we don't feel like helping somebody else. We're too tired, we're too rushed. Right? Sometimes we have other things on our agenda. Sometimes we just, we, we snap at somebody. We say an unkind word. We do those things that sometimes we're not as proud of, right? And we don't show that image of Christ. We don't love Christ and God the way we should. But what the scripture says here is that we have a great advocate in Jesus Christ. That not only is Jesus, did Jesus reconcile us to God on that first Easter morning, but Jesus continues to reconcile us to God, right? There is an attitude of repentance in this community, in our community. There is an attitude of repentance to recognize that sometimes we don't get it right. 
but that when we do that and we come to Jesus, we are forgiven. We are forgiven, and then we can continue to move on. We can continue to move on and be that presence of God in this world. So to me, on an everyday data basis, that is a reason to rejoice. It is a reason to rejoice because I don't have to go back every day and feel bad about how I failed the previous day. It means that I don't have to dwell on how I still fall short of, um, of all the things that I should do, whether I prayed enough, read scripture enough, um, any of those things. Because every day God is renewing us through Jesus Christ is forgiving me and renewing me through that repentance. And it means now that my joy can be being part of that community. My joy can be having a new day full of potential to live for God's mission and God's purpose. It means that my joy is that I can be, I'm empowered to be an ambassador for Christ. It means, that's what it means for each and every one of us here. Is it as we, as you all, as we all have journeyed as a congregation, that's what the things we've learned. We've learned that there is love. There's God's love and there's human love. We've learned that there is grace, that there is forgiveness. We've learned to be better people. We've grown to be better people in God's love through the Holy Spirit. We've learned over time, over those struggles, over those trials, tribulations, and joys, we've learned to become the body of Christ. And that's what the writer in John talks about. The writer in John talks about his joy being that not only are we in community and fellowship with each other, but we are actually in community and fellowship with God the Father and with Jesus Christ. That is, if you think about it for a second, that is incredible. That we are in, in, communion, in communion and community with our creator, our maker, the creator of the universe, the creator of time and space, we are in community there. What should we do with that? What could we do with that? What can we do knowing that that is the power that we have in us? And how we live our life, okay? So there is witness. Witness ends up being a scary question. The, the, the writers in John are talking about their witness, right? There's a portion of church history where witness meant grabbing your soapbox, heading to the corner of Villa Park, getting on top of your soapbox and, and preaching the gospel message. But now is a different time. And I think that as empowered, beloved, reconciled people to God, our witness has to be different because the times have changed. Our witness has to be how we live our lives. That is really our witness now. And so it's interesting to me in this, in this scripture passage where there is no talk about moral behavior. There is no right or wrong. How are you supposed to behave and how are you not supposed to behave, right? There is only the talk about if you sin, you can repent and be forgiven. There is no talk about being on the right side or the wrong side of any particular social justice issue. There's no talk about um, the right political party and the wrong political party. There is no talk about any of those things. What is talked about is this community. What is talked about is repentance. What is talked about is reconciliation to God. That's that's the essence of our faith. We are called to that, and we're called to live a life like that as our witness. We're called to, make, to, to, to have people look at us and wonder how come we can be calm in the face of struggle, how we can be loving, how we can love people that are unlovable, people that have wronged us. How can we continue to be generous you know, those things are going to be far and away more of our witness 
than anything that you and I will ever say, right? Your kids know it. Every little kid knows it, right? They learn from their parents, not so much by what their parents say, by what their, but by what their parents do, right? That's, that's the proof. That's the proof in the pudding. Don't tell me, don't tell me what's right or wrong. Show me. Show me how you live. If we are going to be the people that are known by our love, if we are going to be the reflection of Christ, if we are going to, to tell the world about forgiveness, about wholeness, about peace, about comfort, if we are going to be the spreaders of that good news, that good news has to be manifested in the way that we live our lives. That, I think, is the important thing about Easter, is that Easter is not meant just for believers. The good news of Easter, the good news of com the coming of the Holy Spirit, the good news of the resurrection is for all people, believers and non-believers, but that the believers are called to, be, to testify to it, to witness to it. We are called to that. We are called to be, to be known. We know that we are loved by God. We are accepted by God. We are right with God. And we want to share that. We want to share that with the community because it will be our joy for more people to know that, more people to share in that good news, more people to be reconciled to God. So let us do that. In this Easter season, let us find ways to be that vision of hope and joy and love that God first shared with us. Let us also share that with other people. With the blessings of the Holy Spirit, who can stop us? We are empowered, beloved people, covered by God's grace. Inheritors of eternal life, what do we have to worry about? Let us go out, show God's love, love God, love our neighbor, and spread that, spread that to our communities and our families. Amen. 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 Our next hymn is Just As I Am Without One Plea from the United Methodist Hymnal, page uh, 357.
So we have an opportunity as we do each week to come together in joy and thanksgiving and recognize the ways that God has been uh, present, the way we have seen God at work in our world and in our lives, and to raise prayers of need, recognizing that so much of our lives and the lives of others are out of our hands, but they are in the hands of God. So at this time, I would ask you, does anybody have any joys or prayers of thanksgiving or God sightings or anything that they would like to share uh, before God and the congregation? We have two joys. John Christensen is out of rehab and home. He's still weak, but he's very happy to be home. And uh, their son was up visiting and has built a ramp for them to uh, make it easier for him to get in and out of the house. Okay. Okay, thanks be to God. We are thankful that John is, um, is home, is uh, back home recuperating. I'm sure we share in his joy of, of being there. And then who, what was the second joy? The second joy is Monine had successful cataract surgery this past week. Oh, okay. So thanks be to God for Mooney getting, um, Mooney getting her cataract surgery. We're thankful to God that that uh, surgery was successful and that she is recuperating. And we pray uh, for the success of that, that her vision will be, uh, will be clear. Um, so we, we, uh, we're thankful to God for all of that. I, I have a joy uh, to share. Uh, I was able to visit my grandchildren after a year and a half. And I took them to uh, uh, an Easter service, which was uh, uh, with everyone. And uh, I was able to spend the entire week with them and uh, got, to, got some one-on-one -on -one time. So I was very appreciative of that. All right, well, we are thankful for Mark's, uh, Mark's opportunity to go back in New Jersey, right? Right. Right, so go to travel to New Jersey um, in the midst of everything that's been happening, but after a year and a half, finally being able to visit the grandkids and attend Easter worship service with them and to spend time with them. Um, we are so th thankful to God for, for that blessing and for that reconnection. Uh, so thanks be to God that you had the opportunity to do that. Other joys today? Well, I, I have a praise of thanksgiving to God because our family has been watching the series uh, uh, The Chosen. And possibly some of you have heard about it. It's an angel production. They're striving to uh, Stay true to the word of scripture, and it's about Jesus and his calling of the disciples, and it's really well acted and well done. I'm praying that they keep the money coming in so that they can uh, get the series to completion through seven uh, series, so it would be wonderful. I highly, highly recommend it, and I've talked with Linda about it, uh, Linda Womack, not Linda Womack, Linda Nystrom, and Phyllis, so I would encourage you to get it, stream it, and I don't know how to do all that stuff, but um, it's worth the effort. Okay, well, we're thankful for that. It's called The Chosen? The Chosen. Okay. There are many so, um, series called The Chosen, but this one is a brand new one. Okay. Well, we are. you know what? We are thankful for God. Thank goodness that you don't have to listen to me all the time for your <laughs> That's not, what I, that's not why I said that. No, 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 no. But, you know, <laughs> but, but really, if you think about this, we, I mean, we have such a blessing from God that we have so, there's so many different ways to hear the message and retell these stories, you know, um, especially in this day of technology where you've got streaming and TV and all these things. Um, you know, like I, I, before Easter, before Good Friday, I watched um, the Passion of the Christ, because that's something that I do to remind myself of what happened that week. Um, but what a blessing that we can all hear these stories in different ways and, and connect to God in those different fashions. And so thank you to God. We pray blessings on that. If any of you see it, that'd be awesome. Um, and then we should... So is it a series series? Like it's a... Yes, like, it's a series. And they've okay. only completed, I think, the first... The first one, which is probably six or eight yeah, sessions. Okay. Well, maybe when we're back to get, so what are we, what's still on our list? We have on our list, we have Patchkey Day, and now we have like a movie series night. So <laughs> once we get back into, yeah. uh, or we can do a 
both together, we can do movie night and patch. Game. It would be great. And we could have a discussion afterward. It would be a yep. wonderful teaching tool. Yep. Okay. It's well, thanks be to God for that. <laughs> but how Thank do you. Say you. It? <laughs> Sorry. Punchki. How do you say it? Punchki. 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 You know, got to get it right. Punch. Like punch. Punch. All right. I'll keep working on it. I never really got the pronunciation right. So we don't, we don't. I spelling it. Like, like, like Mark, you've never seen anything. You've never seen that in New Jersey, right? No. What's that? Punch keys? No. Yeah. No, they got, uh, they got uh, pork roll though. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. So I, I, so I never encountered this word when I was growing up. So I don't really know how to pronounce it. So just that's my, that's my justification on it. Uh, okay, other... we'll give you a pass until next Easter. Thank you. Well, <laughs> well, well I'll just point it, point it, and be like uh, that thing. <laughs> Polish donut. <laughs> Any other? What other joys today? How about prayers of concern? I have a concern. Yeah. I have been diagnosed with a spot on my lung. This Irishman has got a spot on her lung. Oh. And um, I had a PET scan on Friday, so I'm waiting for results. And I don't know what they're going to do or what they think they're going to do. But it's there. It has been growing, and it needs to be taken care of. Huh. Okay. So, we want to lift up in prayer, um, Alice, for um, for this this medical condition. We want to pray for uh, God's blessing on her um, as she waits for these test results, and we do want to pray that her doctors and nurses and caregivers will find a way to address this issue and that would restore her and bring her back to health. And so we do want to keep Alice in our prayers this week. We have our good friend, Bill, that we talked about last week, and he is um, going to begin his chemo at um, Amita in Hinsdale. He has pancreatic cancer, so um, keep him in your prayers, Bill. So we want to lift up uh, as well, Bill in our prayers for God's uh, healing as he goes into his treatment um, for pancreatic cancer. We do want to keep him in our prayers and, and his family as well. Other prayers of concern? Oh, may I bring up another joy? Sure. Neighbors of Calvary, Jim and his family have planted new flowers by our church sign. Oh, oh is that nice? Oh, so, oh nice. Yeah, wow. we're, we're right thankful. For, yeah, that's awesome. We're thankful to God for Jim and his wife for, for planting those and, and bringing some joy into our church property. That's, that's awesome. So thanks be to God for that. Anything else, joys or concerns? All right then, if you would please all join me in an attitude of prayer. Gracious God, we come to you this week after Easter thankful for your son, thankful for his sacrifice at the cross, and thankful for the resurrection that you provided, that we may know that um, our creation is now not headed for death and destruction, but this creation that you made is headed to be reconciled with you. That death will no longer have a part of it. That sin will no longer have a part of it. That we will someday be um, made fully whole, fully the way you envisioned us to be at the beginning. And that we will have eternal life with you and your son. God, we're thankful for this in this Easter season. God, we know that sometimes as we go through life, we don't always get it right. Sometimes we're not as kind or as helpful as we should be. Sometimes we lose our patience. Sometimes we just don't even see the need. 
God, we are sorry for that. We are sorry for sometimes what ends up being our selfishness or self-centeredness. God, we pray that you would put in us a spirit that, um, that recognizes that and that turns toward you, in all things turns toward you. Help us to become the creation, the creature, the people that you have dreamed about from the beginning. As we have gone through this week, God, we have so many joys, so many things that we have seen with the eyes that you have given us to give thanks to you. We give thanks to you for um, travel, to be able to reconnect with friends and family that we have not seen in so long. The joy of being able to spend time with grandchildren, the joy of being able to, to come together and worship with them after so long being separated. We are thankful for prayers answered. For those people that we have prayed for, for health or other concerns, in which you have um, graciously healed or recuperated or returned to home, we are thankful for that. We're thankful for all the ways that you have appeared in our life as well. Things that sometimes we recognize and in ways sometimes we don't. But in all things, God, we know you are good and you are loving and that you hold us in the palm of your hand. We're thankful for all of us that you have kept safe this week. All those who have gotten their vaccines. God, and we pray blessings on those who continue to deliver vaccines, continue to make them, continue to study this pandemic so that we might learn more and know more and be better able to control it, to keep people safe, to do no harm. At the same time, God, so many of us have also faced struggles this week or are dealing with a challenge. We pray for our sister uh, Alice and our brother Bill who are dealing with health issues. But we are thankful for those that you have seen through um, their health problems too. God, for Alice and Bill, we pray that you would be with them as they wait for test results, as they uh, go through treatments. God, we pray that you would assure them. Assure them that they are not alone in this, that you are with them and their church family is with them, that their community is with them, their friends are with them. That no one has to journey through this alone. Pray that, you, that your grace, your mercy, your love would be on their hearts. That you would support their families and their caregivers through this, that you would see them through, and that you would restore them. But God, most of all, we pray that, that, that no matter what the outcome, that they would be assured, assured that they have life through your son, Jesus Christ. God, we pray all these things, all these things in the power of the name of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray all these things. Amen. Now we come together as a congregation, as a family, as journeymen, journey people in a life of faith to pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Coming together and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Are We Yet Alive? from the United Methodist Hymnal number 553. How's Wesley? I don't know if he'll be at Are we yet alive? Choosing each other's face. Glory to Jesus for his mighty grace. What trouble have we seen? What mighty conflicts
now as we conclude our worship service this morning, let us leave this place with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.